I'm Tennessee, man. Can't wait to, to get on the grass with our guys tomorrow. Uh, really excited uh, about uh, the strides that our players have met, made since the uh, since the beginning of off season. Uh, you know, you guys have been around here a bunch uh, through the. Uh, you know, the first quarter of our offseason strength and conditioning, the build up into, into spring ball, the strides that we made, the new newcomers that we got here in January. Uh, we've had more of those guys that have shown up here throughout the course of the summer. Uh, we've continued to build accountability, connection, a uh, sense of uh, the culture that we want to have inside of the building. At this point, uh, everybody's extremely excited about hitting the ground tomorrow morning and competing extremely hard and, uh, and growing individually but collectively as a football team. And, and uh, it's hard to believe that in a month uh, we're going to be inside of Neyland Stadium Thursday night kicking off in front of a, a national television audience and have an opportunity to start this journey uh, here in, uh, in the 22 season. And really proud of what our staff and players have done up until this point, but really excited about what's going on here in the immediate future here over the next couple of days. And uh, so with that, I'll open it up to some questions here. Questions? we get a mic to you. Who wants to be the first? Somebody's got to kick it off this fall. Come on. We'll go with that. Yeah, Josh, I guess a little off topic, but it's the first chance we've got to ask you about since the NCAA notice of allegations came in. Yeah. Are you relieved that you can kind of move forward? The finish line is in, in sight. What's the feeling of the program? Yeah, I, I don't know that uh, relieved is, is really the word. It, it's There's been so much dialogue and communication between our administration and the NCAA, but also just to us and, and where we're at. So some of the things that hit publicly are some things that we haven't been able to talk about. We knew uh, that was coming. And uh, we've been very transparent and open with our current roster, our recruits. Uh, that's why I think uh, we've positioned ourselves uh, extremely well. Um, you know, you look at some of the things that have come out of that, uh, just sensibly talking about uh, us being a model of how to move forward for, for universities when they're dealing with, with something. That's why from the very beginning I've said it, it's really just a speed bump uh, for this program. And, uh, between our, our administration, uh, from uh, Dondi uh, all the way down to uh, you know Danny, and then what we're doing on the football side of it, I think we've positioned ourselves extremely uh, well to, to swallow things up here uh, early and, and be able to move and compete for championships here as we move forward. Austin and West. <clears throat> to follow up on that, um, when you when all that came down, you started getting on the phone with recruits and trying to explain to them a lot of this stuff, you know. It was a small blip, or you've been able to self-impose things that the current that current recruits never really going to see, yeah. and be able to get them with, and explain it with families. How, how much easier does that make things because you can now have tangible things to talk about with that stuff? Yeah, for for us, we've been very transparent um, with the, the two recruiting classes that we've uh, been involved with since our staff has gotten here. One that's signed, one that hasn't. Uh, because of that, I think there's great trust from them. Uh, we've been able to to talk openly about the the things that we were doing inside of our program uh, that we were taking um, in year one and year two. Um, once the notice of allegations came out, being able to have a, a Zoom call with all of them and be able to uh, you know speak more directly about the things that we're doing. And this recruiting class, you know, really hasn't felt the things that we're doing internally. And uh, so they can understand that, you know, the things that are going to happen in the future won't have an impact on, on how they're being recruited, uh, their experience as a, uh, a student athlete here on campus, and what they're going to be able to compete for on the football field. Josh, some of these guys on this team have, I guess, been around you and your staff for, I guess, 18, 19 months now, however long it is. Some of them going into their, they've had two springs. This will be a second preseason camp. Do you think now that they've they've sort of seen the, the things that y'all have talked to them about, sort of giving them some success on the field, do you think some of these guys around here think more things are possible now that they've they believe they, they've seen this? Yeah, I think uh, instead of using a word belief, uh, expect uh, is something that we've talked about. You know, teams that uh, there's a big difference between teams that believe and, and teams that expect. And, and uh, you know, we got to continue to work in a way that we expect to win every Saturday when we get to, to next fall. Uh, but I think there's greater trust and, and understanding. A year ago at this time, none of our players and a good portion of our staff had never been through a training camp together. What does it look like day to day? What does it look like on the practice field? How do we handle the different situations that are inevitably going to come up and that transpired during the course of the season too because that was the first time we had gone through that and so now for you know 80% of your roster and 
you know, for us in our building, almost our entire staff, young and old coaches and support staff, they've all been through it. And so there's great trust and belief in what we're doing, clear lines of communication. They understand the standards and the expectations. They're able to just go out and compete. And, uh, you know, as we've had a couple meetings already, um, you know, the, the energy and, and the focus is so different than it was a year ago. And, and it should be that way. <clears throat> yeah, Coach, outside of Lanise injury, are you healthy otherwise? Will you have a handful of guys limited? I know many guys were out in the spring. Where is your football team health-wise as you hit the field tomorrow? Yeah, uh, Lanise will be out uh, uh, for the entire year this year, just sustained an upper body injury um, a couple of weeks ago and, and had season-ending surgery. Um, but for the rest of our football team, uh, we're really pretty healthy. Um, there's some guys that um, we'll build up through uh, the course of training camp. Uh, Latrell Bumpus, uh, somebody that you know missed a, a portion of spring ball, that will continue to build up. Um, but uh, we're really in a really healthy situation here, moving into training camp. Without getting too specific, do you, do you have maintenance plans for some of those guys like Latrell, who's had a variety of injuries since he's been here? Yeah, between our medical staff, our strength staff, and our position coaches and, and, uh, and coordinators, uh, we have a very specific plan on you know the player load, the volume that we want those guys to get, the amount of uh, team reps as we build throughout the course of training camp. Um, we essentially, you guys know, we go through essentially a four-day block, and uh, as we finish those blocks, we'll always revisit where they're at and, and uh, make sure that we're putting them in a position to grow and compete as a player during the course of training camp, also having long-term health uh, for you know the beginning of the season, but really the entire season uh, in the back of our minds of how we handle things. Any update on Brew McCoy and, and how will you attack that? Just go to practice as usual and just kind of wait on confirmation? Yeah, I've uh, been in dialogue uh, with uh, the, the, the people that we need to. Our administration has been uh, on the other side of the coin, and uh, we, we feel good about where that's going. Uh, Bruce, you know, healthy and uh, ready to compete this training camp, so uh, he'll be involved in everything that we're doing. Coach, just what kind of luxury is it to go into open open camp with a senior quarterback like him and knowing who your guy's going to be and not have a competition as opposed to last year? Yeah, uh, there is competition every day. He's competing against himself and, and uh, certainly against the others too. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, you know, the trust that we have in him, not just as coaches but players around him, um, you know, his leadership, uh, his energy, all those things are extremely important to, to us hitting the ground tomorrow and, and continuing to climb and grow. Uh, as we reset the button for the 22 season and, and uh, become what we're capable of, hopefully. And, and uh, um, so <clears throat> his command of the offense is, is something that's extremely important. All the guys have continued to grow throughout the course of the summer. Joe's in a much better position than he was a year ago um, when he started the season. Uh, you know, Hendon and, and Joe both talked about, you know, how close those guys are. And they compete in a really positive way together, but they support each other too. And, and uh, But for us in our program, uh, it certainly is a luxury to have a guy that's got a lot of time on task in game situations, uh, has command of what we're doing. You know, a, a year ago I thought he made great improvements and some subtle things from the end of the regular season to, to the bowl game. He's continued to climb during the course of the offseason. He's very purposeful and uh, excited about, you know, what he's done and, and, uh, and getting through training camp here with him. Josh, coaches always talk about complimentary football and everything being connected on your team and yeah. helping each other out. Offensively, what are some things that you've maybe thought about that your offense can do to help your defense besides obviously scoring yeah, points? You know, for us, uh, third and so short situational football is a, a huge emphasis uh, for us. There's some opportunities on the plus side of the field that we can be, be better in situational uh, football and, and some four down territory things and, and getting more sevens uh, at the end of drives too. I, I think those are three areas that have a chance to change the way the game's played between all three phases together. Um, as we continue to grow and, and uh, uh, get better in all three phases, um, you know, finishing games, being able to, to you know, essentially run a four-minute situation and control the clock at the end of ball games is something that uh, we've done well on uh, previous stops and something that we're going to need to do here too. Action. 
Josh, looking at your backfield without Laneath, how much of an onus does it put on those freshmen with just Dylan to step up and be ready? And will you look to maybe add to that position, whether outside the program or maybe moving somebody over there? Yeah, I think uh, certainly uh, with Laneath being out, the two young guys, there's a point of emphasis, and there always is, that those guys got to grow, understand what we're doing, be ready to compete at a really high level uh, immediately. Um, you know, Justin's had a little bit more time on task, having been here uh, mid-year. Dylan really excited about what he's done. He's, he's a mature young man that uh, processes things really quickly. Just having an opportunity to be out on the grass with him a little bit, extremely explosive. So between those two guys here early in training camp, they're going to have to grow um, really quickly uh, to, to help us at that position. Yeah. Josh, what have you seen from Juwan Mitchell this all season, and what does he need to do these next couple of weeks to develop a role? Yeah, for him, um, you know, surgery in the, in the early part of the season was actually an injury that he came into our program with. Uh, <clears throat> we all felt like it was the best decision for him, his future, and our future uh, for him to have that surgery when he had it. Um, you know, he's gotten healthy. Uh, he's completely changed his body because of what he's able to do, uh, being 100% healthy. Uh, you know, he's fast, he's explosive, he's got the ability to make a bunch of tackles and, and, uh, and make plays in space. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him compete, his consistency, uh, you know, what type of uh, play we're going to get from him uh, this fall. I want to see him grow during the course of training camp. Great. And then that. You said at SEC Media Days, you said it here today, again, the word expect, and at Media Days you talked about going from hoping to believing to expecting to win. How do you create that? How do you get that mentality in your locker room? It's, it's based off of investment that you have inside of your program, um, not by one person but everybody. It's, um, <clears throat> you know, the being connected in a way uh, where you believe in the person uh, to the left and to the right of you. And it's something that doesn't happen immediate. It's not something you just talk about and it happens. It, it happens because of what you've done in the investment process. The guys have done a great job, um, been dramatically different, uh, you know, since they got back in January. Uh, and uh, they continue to push forward and um, believe we're in a position, if we handle the training camp the right way, uh, we'll be in that type of position next fall. Sort of on that, uh, the fact that you coached these guys last year, does that make it a little easier to judge how much growth they've made individually comparing it to last year? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, they have a better understanding of who I am and, and you know, how I'm going to handle situations and how I'm going to communicate with them. And, and it's true on the other side of the coin for us as a coaching staff, for myself as well, to understand you know, the successes, failures, the, the struggles that they have, you know, what is their, their, their makeup and, and um, you know, their ability to handle the things that are inevitably going to come come up in the course of a ball game, but just in life too. And, and how do we help them? You know, I think coaching is uh, a big part of coaching is understanding who you're trying to communicate with and understanding the right buttons to push with those individuals to draw out the absolute best from them. Ryan and Vince. Josh, I know there's a lot of excitement on early signing day when you guys got uh, Josh Josephs and, uh, and James Pierce. You know, what, those guys obviously just got here a couple months ago, but what, how have they shown up kind of looking physically and how realistic is it for those guys to maybe help you this year? Yeah, we're going to find out uh, this, this training camp, you know, their ability to grow in, in individual technique, fundamentals, understanding our scheme. I've been really impressed with both of them uh, so far this summer, the opportunities that we've had, whether that's in the classroom or out on the grass for their ability to retain information, digest it, and, and apply it uh, out on the, on the football field. Uh, really looking forward to seeing the, the physical combat part of it here is, is uh, you know, they're going against a different type of body type at, at the collegiate level than they were in high school. Um, love both of, of them and what they've done so far, strength and conditioning. So, uh, you know, one of the areas for us defensively that we need to want to get better is third and long defense. Uh, it's an area where they potentially have a chance to, to impact the game uh, early in the season. Uh, they're going to have to go out and earn those, those opportunities here by the way that they play uh, during the course of training. Okay. Josh, you guys obviously have added speed and athleticism through recruiting with your signing classes. Who are some candidates that you feel good about in that competition in the return game, both at punt and kickoff? 
Yeah, D. Williams is somebody that's new to uh, our roster, and if you're asking just about new guys, I think D's a guy that uh, is a perfect example of that. Squirrel White is somebody that we feel like has the, the ability to catch it, but also be dynamic with the, the ball in his hands. Dylan Sampson's a young guy that we feel like has an opportunity to push and compete for, for some of that. I feel like all those guys have great tracking skills, but also have the ability to make uh, explosive plays. And you look at what Bayless was able to bring uh, to our football team a year ago. Um, big plays in the return game, set up scores or create scores. I uh, love what we're doing with Coach Eck and, and developing a group of, of core individuals, but really our entire roster through the special teams part of it. Looking forward to seeing a bunch of guys compete and earn opportunity to play. That's in the return game, but it's also guys that you know are setting up those returns. Back to Britt and then here. You guys were not a great second quarter team statistically a year ago. When you're all season, thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> in, in, in your all season study, self scout, but was there anything that you found? Is there was there any rhyme or reason to? But why your numbers seem to change in the second quarter compared to the first and third? No magic potion in, in some of the the gains that you know that was. You know, very pointed. Uh, it's some of the things that we controlled in those ball games. You know, in, in particular on the offensive side of the football. Um, you know, everything that we've done in our. You know, from how we describe our offseason. You guys have talked to me, heard me talk about the four quarters to to what we do in the right weight room. Um, we relate it to, to four quarters during the course of every week. We've tried to relate everything to football um, and uh, the four quarters and how they're played out. We want to start fast, finish extremely strong, and, and complete, compete our butt off in the in the middle of the football game. Um, <clears throat> a year into you know our strength and conditioning program, a year into our systems, I feel like we have an opportunity to uh, to play better in all phases, in all areas of the game. Certainly, uh, we got to be better in the second quarter, but we got to be better in the fourth quarter too. So there's a lot of opportunities for growth. Hey Josh, do you uh, do you feel like you can use the tight ends more in the offense this year? Maybe incorporate you know more of those guys playing in a game compared to last year? Uh, more bodies? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, you know, <clears throat> training camp, you know, is, is the final opportunity for guys to prove they're going to compete and play at a championship level. Guys that we can depend on, play in and play out, day in and day out. And that dependability is, is a huge part of them having the opportunity to play. And you know, I think, I don't care if it's offense, defense, special teams, coaches' jobs are to take the guys that have proven that they're going to compete at that championship level and find roles, find ways to use what they're able to do and put them in a position to be successful. So the more guys that we have that are able to play at that level, at the tight end position, but every position is going to allow us to be a deeper and better football team. So that depth is something that we're talking about at the tight end position. Um, you know, a young man like Miles Campbell has a real opportunity to grow and, and earn some uh, playing time here. Uh, but it's something that we're talking about in, in every position room right now, and certainly on the defense side of the football. You know, a year ago, you guys all know we were um, handcuffed in some ways, just the, the number of bodies that we had on campus that were scholarship play. We've added depth. We're not at a full 85. Uh, we feel like we have an opportunity to be deeper on the defensive side of the football. It's important to us to be able to play more guys. But at the end of the day, they got to go earn it and prove it here during the course of training camp. Josh, I know obviously there's not a lot of things in this game that are ever ideal. After the opening kickoff, it, it goes haywire. Pretty much, yeah. The uh, when you look at ideally a wide receiver, how what how many guys would you in a normal year sort of like to rotate there? And do you think you can get to that number this season? At the which position? Wide out. Yeah, you know, it just depends on the number of guys that are ready to play at, a, at an elite level. You know, we've had six, we've had five. Uh, you know, there's years it's been four just based off of, of who they are. Um, the more guys that are able to play, the more that we're going to use them. You know, our personnel groupings have been different every year, everywhere that we've been, you know, from being in a bunch of 12 personnel because we had tight ends that were ready to play at a really high level and, and we trusted them to, to being in four wide receiver sets more uh, depending on the year because we had a bunch of wide outs that, that we felt like we were going to play at that level. So at the end of the day, that's a, a part of the process of your entire off season, but certainly here is your last build up to, to the season, uh, finding out you know which personnel you can count on. And, and then from there, uh, week to week, uh, we'll try to put those guys in a position of success. 
Josh, I think on Byron Young, I think after the spring, as you said, he needed to be a, an elite dominant player for you guys. Yeah. What's that next step look like for him? How does he get there? And, and what's your confidence that, that he can reach sort of that level that you guys want him to yeah. want him at? A guy that, uh, to me, and I'm going to talk about him physically here in a minute, but you know, just leadership, communication, um, trust, just inside of the building, man. He's taking a whole nother step as just a person and a human being and a leader. Really proud of, of what he's done uh, coming into his own. You know, a mid-year kid a year ago uh, when we first got here, I actually recruited him at the previous stop and, and uh, uh, you know, love what he did in year one. <clears throat> but I do think, you know, because of how he's grown off the field and what he's done, just continuing to transform his body, added weight, leaned up, his ability to bend, I think, is, is much better at this point. Can't wait to see him in, in some of the one-on-one -on -one pass rush uh, situations and some of the third long periods. Um, we need him to, to take a step, you know, and we need Tyler Barron. We need, you know, Roman to take a step and the young guys that I talked about as well. Uh, a year ago, you know, up until maybe the last two weeks of the season, we were leading the country in tackles for loss. We had guys in third and long. If you're going to play defensive football, that's where you want to be at. <clears throat> a part of us getting better in that situation is being able to affect the, the quarterback with a four-man rush. That comes from individuals that can, you know, master the fundamentals of the technique and, and be a lead at getting to the quarterback. Other questions for Coach? Okay. Guys you, and gals, appreciate it. Have a great afternoon. See you guys soon. Thanks, Coach.